So 75% less code, 90% reduction in load time, and then 15% lift and conversion. Yeah, this was a, yeah, a really great number to see, and we hope we can improve this in the future, of course, as well. The record, a massive improvement. So we just showed the old version and the new version, and merchants were like mind blown. Like, uh, this is what Checkout Cheat Kit immediately solves for us. It's not a web experience, it's really a native experience that the customers feel. So this is literally win-win-win for everyone involved. We love it, and the merchants particularly love it. Welcome, folks. Uh, today, I'm excited to dive into fun and exciting world of commerce and mobile apps. And joining me today is Sebastian, who is a co-founder of Sticky App, which specializes in building mobile app experiences for Shopify merchants. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, to set the stage a little bit, uh, Shopify announced the launch of checkout sheet kit libraries for iOS and Android uh, last October. And I remember sharing the announcement on a few platforms. And I think literally within a couple of hours, I had an email from you in my inbox with a link to a demo of the prototype integration, a set of good questions, and even feedback on the actual libraries that we published, which uh, was, was an impressive feat of execution that I, that I have to say. Uh, so let's start there. Let, let me actually queue up a couple of questions. First of all, what problem does Sticky solve for Shopify merchants? And then what motivated, mot motivated you to jump on Checkout Cheat Kit? Yes, great question. So um, yeah, at Sticky, we solve mobile commerce for merchants at scale. So we built a mobile commerce engine that enables large brands on Shopify to bring their store mobile. And we do that by bringing a bespoke branded experience on the mobile app and handle a huge amount of sales daily through their apps. So uh, basically flash sales or drops you could imagine. So imagine checkout, like if, you, if you're doing flash sales, checkout is a very crucial thing to get right. I mean, it's not it just is. specifically to mobile, it's also very complicated things to get right. So I'm curious how you guys were tackling that in context of mobile commerce and uh, if and where and how checkout sheet kit helped in that particular endeavor? Um, yeah, so checkout has always been a crucial part in our apps as well, as you said. So um, we actually last year, Black Friday, we handled 33 checkouts per second uh, at a peak time. So that was something for our apps to really show like that checkout needs to work very well. And uh, we got this right with Checkout Sheet Kit uh, in particular this year because um, then we can use the full power of Shopify's new checkout experience. And um, that is why we immediately implemented it as soon as we saw the announcement. And that is uh, when we reached out to you as well, like uh, with uh, questions regarding implementation, but also upcoming features. And um, yeah, uh, it's, since then, it's been a great experience so far. So that's, that's awesome to hear. Um, I think you alluded it um, in your earlier statement and it's worth unpacking the full capability of checkout, right? Uh, so this is part of the offering of Checkout Sheet Kit, which is it's our attempt to make integrating and delivering the fully featured checkout into mobile experience that feels native. Um, so I'm curious, what was missing before the, that is now being closed? What is that gap in terms of capabilities or some of the capabilities? Yeah, so before when we when we didn't have Checkout Sheet Kit, we used Checkout API to handle checkouts at our mobile apps. Mm -hmm. So uh, we needed to write a lot of GraphQL queries and uh, yeah, very internal stuff to handle like um, yeah, shipping shipping options, delivery addresses, anything that needs to be done from a customer perspective needs to be sent to Shopify, validated, right, and then right. sent back to our app. And this is something that got alleviated by Checkout Sheet Kit so much. So we um, actually removed all of this logic from our mobile apps and were able to yeah, fully offload this basically to the Shopify API, which is uh, great for us because then we can focus more on our goals to uh, bring this branded experience to merchants at a good performance, especially on those large drops or flash sales that we are uh, having. So that's, that's actually a perfect transition. So we recently published a case study, which was, which was great. And um, there's a number of figures in there which are mind-blowing, I think, for most people. So the first one you actually already alluded to, which is 75% uh, less code. And I'll, I'll list them out, and then I'd love to actually just double-click into each one. So 75% less code, 90% reduction in load time, 
and then 15% lift and conversion, right? So this is literally win, win, win for everyone involved. Like for you, there's less code for merchants. There's better conversion and more features. And for the buyer, it, it loads faster. It's almost too good to be true. <laughs> so I'd love to just zoom in on each one of those and understand how, how they are true. So first one, 75, 75% 75 less code. I think you already hinted it. Um, you don't have to write some of the GraphQL complexity, implement all of those capabilities, but where is that reduction actually coming from, from your implementation? Yeah, really, really great question. So one thing I already mentioned was the logic that we need to enable for like shipping, info processing, anything like this. So this needs to happen in our apps. And that's something which we can uh -huh. remove because we rely on checkout from Shopify. Um, but another big topic about this is the unique branding that we try to offer in this checkout experience. So we were working with the GraphQL endpoints before, which we then needed to present in our own presentation layer. And this is uh -huh. something which we easily could remove because the checkout sheet kit comes with everything that Shopify already offers in an online store, but in a great way for mobile apps to utilize. So we can adapt this uh, checkout experience very easily and without touching the mobile code too much and uh, still get this great performance, which we um, had before. So um, yeah, I think this, this re code reduction mainly comes from presentation layer and UI objects that we could remove and uh, also the logic and validation, which uh, also, yeah, brought a great uh, uh, performance improvement in the end. So that's really great to hear, because I think this is one of these unobvious aspects of Checkout Sheet Kit, right? There's the capabilities. So what, what Checkout Sheet Kit does is it actually embeds the web checkout kind of in a seamless way into your mobile app, um, which allows us to bring all the capabilities that exist on web without you having to re-implement everything through API. So that obviously reduces the amount of code. But the other aspect that a lot of people miss is merchants also spend a lot of time on customizing their checkout. It's the branding APIs, how it looks, how it feels, and all the rest, right? And I think that's the bit that you're highlighting that you had to replicate, which is just like toil, right? It's toil for you and it's toil for the merchant because yes. they already configured it in one place. Why do I have to replicate it in another? And um, one thing that we spent a lot of time when we were working on um, Checkout Sheet Kit is trying to reason through we want to preserve and carry over all the customizations, but we also want it to feel idiomatic and native, right? So as a user, it doesn't feel like, oh, like this is a disjointed experience. I was in my native app and now it's just like other thing comes up. So it actually applies a set of mobile optimizations and defaults while preserving the the branding API. So, and, and that's a hard thing to get right to fine tune it. We're still iterating on it, but it sounds like it worked I'm curious yeah. if you have any feedback or if you, if you run into any um, issues there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great to hear because that was exactly the problem we were having before. So uh, actually, uh, you guys took this off from us because that was actual merchant requests we got on a daily basis. Like, can we adapt this specific thing in the checkout in the mobile yeah. app? Because it looks different than uh, the Shopify web checkout. And we hesitated to send customers from the mobile app very early on to the web checkout because we knew that the experience is kind of lagging behind. And yep. uh, this is what Checkout Sheet Kit immediately solved for us. It's not a web experience. It's really a native experience that the customers feel. And um, yeah, we love it and the merchants particularly love it. And this is uh, when we saw this whole benefit of it. That's perfect. Yeah. And just, just to make it concrete for, for those that are not familiar with Checkout Sheet Kit, like an example would be just even responding to light and dark mode, right? So if you yeah. have your system settings and your app responds to that, Checkout will respond to that as well. And it just works as, as you would expect, right? So that's just like a nice layer of polish. But let's dive into the second, the second point. Uh, performance is near dear to my heart. 90% uh, reduction in load time is impressive. How did you guys achieve that? Or how did you observe that? Yeah, this was also for us a little bit mind blowing. So when we started implementing Checkout Sheet Kit, we just started by implementing a few lines of code to really see how the UI looks like. And this was already really cool, but the performance did not improve that much because we had all our previous validations, which we needed to do um, yeah. uh, before when we were using Checkout API. Um, already being done in the background. And this is why we also saw when adding things to bag or opening the checkout, it still took a little bit of time to, to open. 
And then we really started looking at the code again and throwing out things which are not necessary anymore. So stuff like um, shipping validations, validating does the address have a phone number? Um, is it really in line with the merchant requirements for shipping? So this is often something that goes right. wrong. Same as uh, payment processing, which takes often a bit of time, especially with uh, 3D Secure or other validations that need to happen. And um, by reducing this code, we also saw this improving uh, performance over time. And this was really great to see because we could not only sell this as a developer feature that like we reduced code, this is not something that merchants appreciate right. that much, but the improved performance right. was something which we could actually show. And we made presentations where we just showed the old version and the new version and merchants were like mind blown. Like, wow, this is actually really cool that you did this. And they just got this as an added benefit from Sticky and Shopify. We have a video that you guys shared and this is embedded on a case study, which is really worth just watching and you can play it on repeat just for the like repeat mind, mind blowing experience of tapping on checkout and seeing it pop up instantly. And that inst the instantaneous part is the real like magic and the real unlock somewhat. And I know that you guys uh, did a few rounds on preloading. So I'm curious if, if you are willing to share some of the experience there and how that worked out for you. Yeah, so preloading was actually really the, the thing that, that really blows merchants' minds and our minds as well. Before, when we had to add items to a bag or anything, we needed to do, I said, validations again. But like this is something that was heavily done when, when, um, when using Checkout API. And now with this preloading feature from Checkout SheetKit, we can, on a certain basis, we can preload Checkout SheetKit and tell basically the SDK to... Uh, that the customer is about to go to checkout, which is a great thing because, for example, when somebody um, uh, puts an, an item into a bag, we know, okay, this is some trigger that we can directly use to point checkout sheet kit to preload checkout. And when they continue to go to their shopping bag and click checkout, they will immediately see the checkout page by Shopify, which is a great experience. That's because before you... We're adding stuff to bag and you click checkout and it takes a spinner and takes, for example, three to five seconds to really render the whole page. Then you need to add more stuff. I don't know. It was not a good experience. And this one was particularly mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a tested and true technique, right? That, that we've applied here. And the, the best way to think about it, is I think you captured it well, which is at certain moments, we know that the customer is likely to transition to checkout next. So we can proactively initiate the load of that or just initialize it in the background to do all the negotiations. So you're effectively rendering the whole checkout process off Canvas while the user is just getting ready. And even something like a couple hundred milliseconds between transitioning from adding to cart to tapping checkout, which is how long it takes for buyers to just like move their, move their finger to do a tap, can often mask a lot of the uh, latency uh, whether that's API-driven workflows or, in this case, what we're doing with Checkout Sheet and, and embedding the web content. So in the mass majority of cases, when you tap Checkout, you actually just bring the fully rendered off-canvas into, like, first, uh, into the front layer. And it, it's magical because it's instant. It's just, like, it's snappy. Uh, I really love that in the, in the demo. So that's great. And I assume this then leads to the last point, which is you guys also observed a 15% lift in conversion since you've rolled that out to your merchants, which is for the record, a massive improvement, like 15% <laughs> beyond just getting faster loads, 15% is a massive contribution to the merchant's bottom line. So I'm curious if you're willing to share some uh, insights from, from that experience and maybe some hypothesis for where and why the conversion rate yeah. Uh, yeah. increased. This was particularly uh, interesting to us as well, because we knew, of course, if we improve performance, check out a uh, conversion rate will be increasing by some margin maybe, but we didn't know by how much. And we were closely observing mm. like what happens if we switch this checkout. So um, we chose a few merchants and talked to them like, hey, should we do this experiment for you guys? And they all agreed to like uh, be our uh, little guinea pigs to like test and see like by A-B a testing old checkout versus new checkout to see really what is the improvement in terms of conversion. And we got this crazy number of 15% increase 
and uh, we we got it down basically to this performance increase which we saw. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of case studies which we uh, know already about that uh, performance is a key factor uh, when looking at conversion rates of online stores, and we can I think directly apply this to mobile app. If you put something to a bag and uh, you have to wait five to ten to even maybe twenty seconds if you're on a train or somewhere with uh, bad internet connection, then it's likely you will abort the purchase. However, if the experience is really really fast and uh, the uh, the uh, app is providing a great experience for the customer, the yeah the likeliness of them checking out and really doing this purchase is very high. So um, yeah, this was a yeah a really great number to see. And we hope we can improve this in the future, of course, as well. Uh, there are a lot of ways we can <laughs> improve there as well, but uh, let's see about it. For now, 15% is really good. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. So performance matters. And actually, this is a perfect transition. Um, you guys are at the forefront of commerce and mobile. And I'm curious, what's on the horizon? Like, What are the merchants asking for? And where do you see Sticky steering the market? Yeah, great question. So um, there's a lot of room to grow in the mobile commerce space. Um, and Sticky's mission has always been to continue to build a platform for agencies and developers to, dev to offer their merchants mobile apps. So we try to make our um, engine as yeah, open as possible to let merchants and agencies build new extensions on Sticky as well. So for example, with Checkout right. Sheet Kit, um, there are now options to uh, extend the checkout very easily with uh, Checkout UI extensions. And this is something which we yeah, want to improve in the future as well. So for example, a Shopify Plus partner of ours is doing a gift with purchase extension in the checkout to offer mobile app users exclusively a gift with purchase in the checkout, which is a really Very great cool. way. And um, this is something that we want to improve in the future as well, to offer more uh, app-only things like promotions, special prices that happen only in the app, and this is something our merchants ask uh, always as well, as well as um, performance improvements on all fronts. So, uh, yeah, this is something we want to push in the mobile commerce space. That's really cool. And that's a good example of now that you have the full power of checkout and UI extensibility, those merchants can use the available tools that they're already familiar with that they're extending. And they can target specific channels and say, I want this extension to be applied in mobile because maybe it's a tactic or a technique that works particularly well or maybe for this particular user because they're a VIP or to something, something to that extent. So that's, uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, Sebastian, this is great advice and I think a perfect place for us to, to stop. Um, thank you for the great insights and joining me for this conversation. For mm -hmm. anyone curious about mobile com commerce, I really encourage everyone to try out Siki app and take a look at the case study that we published um, and also the checkout sheet kit libraries, which are available on GitHub. Um, it's checkout done right. So thanks all, and uh, until next time.